in interactive entertainment in the future. Now, there is something I'd like to add to is um, Itagaki is um, also very good at making some of the hardest games ever created. Like, the Ninja Gaiden series is, you know, not not as bad as Ghosts and Goblins, like, you know, we're gonna throw everything possible at you, but Ninja Gaiden is, like, unrelentingly hard. <laughs> unrelentingly hard, and it has stupendous level design. The, uh, you know, the, all these Nintendo Entertainment System ones, 1, 2, and 3 were phenomenal, and the Xbox one, uh, and I, of course, the second one's on the way now. I can't wait to see what that one looks like. But the first one I played through, and the level design was almost impeccable. I mean, it was so fluid. You had to. It's so challenging, but you learn the level. You learn how to play it, how to react, and you become one with the character. You become the ninja. And so that's why this series has become so prolific. And why this character? I don't know what you're talking about with one with the character at all. <laughs> this character Ryu Hayabusa is one with Ray at this moment, and uh, you just see how intensely difficult Fuck. this is. But up to that <laughs> point, he was having a flawless run, and it's just so challenging. One little misstep, and you're done. And you react as if you are one with the game. <laughs> and uh, Tomonobu Itagaki was also charged with a sexual harassment lawsuit <laughs> more recently. So there's a little bit more about him. <laughs> maybe not something he's so much proud of, but maybe he is. Again, he's a rock star. Of course he's going to sleaze himself up on women. What do they expect? <laughs> I'm not saying it's right, but... That's, that's what the, rock stars do. It's the type of guy he is. He's going to do it. So he's going to get a sexual harassment lawsuit now and again. You know, that happens. You work for a guy like that, he's probably going to whip his wang out at you. <laughs> Let's face facts. All right, and this next... we're we're getting deep into the uh, into the commentary here because I'm just getting silly here because we've been going at this for I don't even know how long. This has been a very long uh, analysis of the system, but we wanted to cover all the main genres, all the main games, and there was just too many to exclude. We we had a very tight list of of uh, 30 plus games. Oh, we had the the list was even longer than this before we started cutting. Yeah, we had to make cuts so, uh, and we'll follow up with more Ray's Retro Reviews and more addendums to this console war. Uh, you know, some of the series we just didn't want to do because we wanted to spend more time talking about the game specifically whereas the focus of this uh, has been to talk about the Nintendo system, its impact and what it brought to the table and what these games brought to the table and not to mention its complete domination in its day <laughs> you know it, it you want to talk it domination rocked the house <laughs> nintendo was at one time the most profitable company in the world even over exxon over exxon over ibm over any stock brokerage over any company in the world nobody was generating more profit with their products and services than nintendo Company Limited, which is just tantamount to to all of that. As we said, Hiroshi Yamauchi is still the most wealthy man in Japan, and he's not even the president of the company anymore. He's stepped down. He's just a shareholder and you know father figure. And uh, let's throw out another Hiroshi Yamauchi factoid real quick. This man uh, we've spoken very highly about as a a great businessman, but he is not a game designer. In fact, he does not really care for video games and does not like video games as an entertainment medium. He was documented of playing a video game one time in his entire life. The guy that turned Nintendo into a game company and an executive produced every Nintendo game played one video game. What game? Othello. Okay. Based on, on the parlor game Othello for the Famicom. And he sat down and tried playing it, and he couldn't 
get his hands around the controller. He didn't like how it felt in his hand. He didn't like how you press the buttons. And after several minutes of playing Othello, he threw the controller down in disgust, walked away, and never touched a video game again ever. Wow. <laughs> this is the guy that has some of the best sense of what makes a video game great, and that's what we don't really understand about this guy is he could tell you whether a video game was going to be good or bad by listening to the game design concept but would not engage in the activity, did not like the activity, didn't find it entertaining, but he knew He just knows how people work. He has such a sense about about what's entertaining about a, a medium level of, of entertaining and uh, keeping people into it and uh, and so he just has a great business sense, and that's what really made Nintendo stand out and got them to the top. An amazing character, an amazing man, and an evil man to a degree in the sense of, of humans being evil and not in the the um, religious sense of good and evil. I mean in, in tactics and, and character. I mean, he was a fierce brass bald individual that you did not want to cross he had a steely look in his eyes and uh, you would not want to get on his wrong side but he was a great businessman and and brought some of the greatest video games in the world to us not as a designer but just as a as a father figure so let's see one of these other games that this guy helped bring along yeah this is this uh, is a a rather ingenious game that was just discovered you know, it was discovered. One, but... Nint Nintendo has a knack for looking for these really original game concepts, games like they would make, pit, sca uh, snatching them up and distributing them. So let's see a great example of this. Okay, so we're going to take a look at a game from Alexei Pashinov, and I've butchered his Russian name because they have letters that we can't pronounce in English. Now, Alexei, we're going to call him, was a professor in Russia, and he worked at a university. He was into computer science, and Russia didn't have a video game industry of any sort. Russia everything, didn't have an industry. <laughs> everything was government run during the, the old Soviet Union and there was no such thing as creative endeavors such as video game design. So Alexei Patinov played around with his little computers in his, uh, in his uh, classrooms and came up with this weird little concept where these little falling blocks would come down in several different shapes and you would have to arrange them and into lines filling the board and they would clear as they went and that Who would have thought that a simple game design like that would turn into this <laughs> yeah it was not envisioned as a as a commercial item it was not sat down in a boardroom meeting to say what can our next big game be this was just a dude a nerd a Russian who wanted to play with his his computers and came up with a cool idea and so as he started to to distribute it uh, to the universities in Russia and to different universities it became well known and no one was selling it Tubeheads, wake up! You know that $49.95 check that Granny sent you? You know that'll get you your very own Nintendo Entertainment System. Get one and you can play the new Mega Man 6 and battle evil robots. Stop watching those wig commercials! I can even shower with it! And there's Soda's Revenge, Star Tropics 2, where you battle Soda, the man with no face. No more mommy soaps for you! As teardrops fall... So, thank Granny! Oh. Cash the check and get the NES. You have watched too much TV already. Who can't